hope that was really useful. I mean, as I said earlier, it's always quite difficult because I know people, you know, this, we've got huge studios here. We've got small independent production companies, you know, right across the spectrum. So hopefully by choosing those sessions, you found something which is of specific interest to you. Um, but also a lot of the speakers um, and panelists are hanging around over coffee and lunch. So do feel free to continue the conversation and, you know, network, pass business cards, because there's an awful lot of talent in this room as far as actually sharing ideas. So please do use it. Um, so now I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Um, Thomas Hogue is the founder and CEO of Arts Alliance. Arts Alliance has built and invested in over 40 companies since 1996, typically targeting private media and entertainment companies that have a technology angle. As both an investor and entrepreneur, Thomas spends most of his time overseeing a portfolio of high growth businesses in the creative sectors across Europe. He sits on the boards of numerous media companies, including City Screen, Love Film, and the UK Film Council. And he's also one of the founding directors of Love Film. And I think you're actually going to talk quite a lot about Love Film today. So therefore, he is actually uniquely qualified to understand the full impact of the current economic, economic downturn and how HR can help the businesses to maintain momentum during a difficult period. And he'll tell you about some success stories, as well as some examples of companies which have been badly affected and how it's actually affected morale generally. And we're also going to be hearing from Kim Stringer, the HR manager of Love Film, on their particular case study and how they've coped with the recession. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Thomas Hogue. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me here today. Um, it is a lovely day, whether you like it or not. Each day is a lovely day. And all of you have to spread optimism, drive, help people stretch to reach goals, and create a sense of kind of collective ambition, as well as being honest and direct. When things are not working to uh, as well as they should, and kind of reset reality uh, and create a shared reality among all the stakeholders and companies that you work with. Being the custodian and developer and, and magnet of talent is a really tough job. And I admire uh, all of you for choosing to work in, in this sector. Um, because it's, it's uh, in, sometimes, I think, an undervalued but hugely important and growingly so important role uh, in the success of companies. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here today, is because I think that it is uh, in these kinds of markets, uh, there's, not enough, there's, n there's no limits to what we can do to ensure that the, work, the people that uh, make our companies successful are well informed well taken care of and understand uh, what they're doing and what, what success means for them as individuals, for their group, for their division, for their company. A good CEO understands uh, the, that the human capital in his or her company is what makes a business succeed. It does not matter if it's on minimum wage or if it's a superstar. They all perform according to how well they're managed as people. And how well they're managed, as, as well as, of, co of course, all the other aspects of their management. In adverse markets, these sort of ABCs, um, they get just even more important. And it's almost limitless what you can do to, to communicate with people. Not only does everyone care more about the company's health out of self-preservation, but you also tack on a set of interested parties of significant others who depend more on the relative stability, predictability, and cash flow that a job offers. You have, you have all kinds of people who are worried and they need to be taken care of, and then you have an outer layer of that. So the amount of people that, the amount of time, sorry, that staff 
use on thinking about tomorrow as opposed to their job is exponential for every headline that reads misery uh, in the press. I want to focus today on the intersect of psychology and sound business practice. My job in building companies is in reality to assemble great people, to, to focus on, on doing what they're best, give them resources, and get out of the way. I don't think I'm a particularly good manager. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm a particularly bad manager. Um, but uh, I think that the role I play in these companies are, has been relatively successful. Uh, and, uh, and one of them is to, is to let them get on with their, what they're doing. However, even the most talented people require a catalyst from time to time to challenge their brilliance. Ask hard questions and trigger change if required. In the current market conditions, this is a flat out task. As pretty much all of our companies have to make major changes to survive, grow with less resources, take advantage of opportunities, and seek to accelerate growth as incumbents are retracting, cutting, flapping, flapping about in the dark, uh, and generally moving closer and closer to dramatic declines. In some aspects, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to change the landscape industry after industry segment after segment. Media is no different. As a matter of fact, media is particularly prone to changes these days, as so many aspects of our business is changing. Who would think that the value of ITV would be less than the Daily Mail, and that the most profitable media company in Britain is not British at all? It's Google, and most of its profits do not recirculate at all in this country. I'm not making any judgment about that. I'm just saying it's an incredibly interesting sort of market situation. And everyone has a sort of a the sort of favorite topic is to have some kind of negative view on Sky. I think that's rather ridiculous. I think they deliver an incredibly good product, and people flock to it like ever before. But what's fascinating is that the media sector has it all, from disasters to hypergrowth. The contrast between uh, B Sky B and ITV uh, in performance, risk, outlook could not be more pronounced. If you ask someone about that, five, ten years ago, I think the answer would be incredibly different than what it is today. In the film sector, the financial drought has stalled domestic film production. However, the decline of the pound has opened up inward investment like we haven't seen in years from across the pond. And, uh, it's been uh, possible for the U.S. studios to make films here again in the U.K. Love Film grows faster than ever before, but high street DVD retail and rental uh, has a very dark cloud hanging over it. These are all incredibly interesting changes. To some degree, there is there are some through lines in this. And use the companies that I know better, that Sky and Love Film, they benefit as much from, uh, from the consumers paying for convenience and reliable service as they pay for the actual content. And these things are coming more and more in sort of hand in hand. And what does that mean? as a media company where the packaging of the media and how it's served and how it's experienced is many, many times as important as the actual media itself. 